And we're back. To Dr. Tambo Yoko, there is no patient more troublesome than this young man. His voice is hard and flat, his words toss carelessly, eh, carelessly into the air, and is as though as he is speaking to himself in an empty room. Even without the training of a psychiatrist, Yoko can clearly since the thickness of the wall he has erected between himself and the world. Liar. What? And he says, no, nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Sakisaka appears to be looking at Yoko. His gaze is actually aimed a uh, fraction down to the side. He's only superficially, in superficially engaged in a conversation he has no interest in. Perfect rejection. Realizing that she can't interview him like this, Yoko sighs and sets aside her chart. Wait, what was what was our t word? To, was it pass? Yeah. Okay, pass. Or popcorn. N no. <laughs> Elimination of a subdural hematoma through the use of micro machines a treatment available in japan only at this t university medical center had been the only way to save saki saka fuminori from a cerebral contusion that should have been fatal well, that was a mouthful <laughs> <laughs> Sakisaka Fuminori's lips twist slightly in what might be a bitter or mocking smile, but it's gone before Ryoko can discern its meaning. Ryoko. Mm -hmm. This is why he has been coming in for weekly checkups. Ryoko would like her patient to take them a little more seriously, though. I never said pass. I thought you said you said you go. No, I said it, Ryuko. Oh, I thought you said you go. Okay, well, you can keep going then. <laughs> Sakisaka asks abruptly, as though trying to catch Ryuko off guard. MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, is a way for neurologists to examine the brain in detail without opening the patient's skull. Surprised by Sakisaka's uncommon technical knowledge, Ryuko recalls his profile. So, there is nothing, not the slightest problem for a procedure with such a low rate of success. The results have been miraculous. However, there is still something bothering Yoko. Presuming on what, me, uh, what might be a doctor's instinct, Ryoko believes that there is something wrong with this patient. She can't say, shake the feeling that he's hiding something beneath his guarded exterior. Some terrible weight in his soul, fear, or perhaps suffering. If it's an inorganic problem, there's nothing she can do as long as he refuse to ex refuses to explain it. ねえ、さきさかさん。こういった難しい手術はヨゴフダンが原則なんです。もう少し私たちを信用してもらえませんと。そうですよね。僕だって先生方を信用したい。どんな相談にも乗ってもらえるんですか。え、もちろん。Y
Unable to answer, Yoko hardens the mask of her smile. He asked the same question last appointment, inquiring after someone whom he, an outsider, had no business knowing. There are plenty of patients besides Sakisaka who make things difficult by jumping to conclusions. Kyoko understands that it's not an unnatural reaction when one's life is in question. In Sakisaka, however, she doesn't see the short-sighted impatience that the other patients exhibit. His calm demeanor makes it seem as though he's questioning a suspect in a crime rather than a doctor. Ryoko answers smoothly with no trace of her earlier hesitation, having decided at the outset to lie, Yoko had no trouble doing so with a straight face. Pass. Okay. Ryuko realizes that her answer was a little too fast. She should have acted more surprised. A relative, Ryoko considers this with a frown. Ryoko replies, realizing that she had just said earlier that she'd had no contact with him. まあ、一風変わった人だったみたいですね。なのに、誰も彼が大学を辞めた理由を知らないと。Ryoko <笑> falls silent, knowing that this isn't a topic she can brush away with just a smile. Sakisaka seems to have finally grasped her mood. However, a strangely stiff tone softens a little. His strangely stiff tone, sorry. Sense.僕はどうしても王外教授に会わなきゃならないんです。彼がいなくなったせいで、いくら手がなくなり困っている子がいるんです。力になってもらえませんか？それはむしろ警察の領分なんじゃないかしら。Although she says it like it's nothing, the suggestion is actually a risky gamble. If Ougai Masahiko, did I say that right? Masahiko. Masahiko, how do you say the first name? Ogai. Ogai, thank you, honey. <clears throat> <laughs> Disappearance becomes a police matter. The university will likely be investigated. And in order to cover up the mess, Ogai left behind the entire faculty. Oh, sorry, facility. That is faculty. What? It faculty? is faculty. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Oh. <laughs> we'll have to work to dispose of the evidence. And that includes Ryoko herself, of course. However, Sakisaka isn't likely to ask the police to investigate. First of all, his excuse is clearly a lie. They already made absolutely sure that Ogai Masahiko had no relatives who might come looking for him, which is what allowed them to bury the truth of what happened. Ooh. But still, how did Sakisaka, with no connection to the hospital other than as a patient, learn of Ogai? Sakisaka, <laughs> そうですか。Pass. Oh. Is that what you were 
It seems like you've been going <laughs> for a while. That you're passing for me. Well, it seems like you've been going for a long time. Yeah, you can do it. All right, expecting resistance, Yoko, Yoko is surprised when Sakisaka backs down. Nevertheless, she's still worried about his condition, and the mysterious link between him and Ogai Masahiko is only making her more uneasy. But as long as he doesn't open up to her, there's nothing she can do. After a brief pause, Ryoko writes progress good on Sakisaka's chart for today. But before she can finish, Ryoko looks up to see Sakisaka already heading out the door. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a nice looking place. <laughs> it looks like someone sprayed the walls with pig guts from ceiling to floor, but I know that this is the hospital hallway. What color should the walls of a hospital be? White, of course. It goes without saying that no hospital will ever paint its walls this color. And to the creatures of rotten flesh shambling around me, this hallway probably looks just as white as it should. I know that the walls are really white and that the piles of meat are really humans. I'm the one with the problem, and it's because I've accepted this that I'm able to lead a normal life. Even if my university's medical department is nowhere near as good as T universities, I'm still a medical student majoring in neurosurgery. I have a basic idea of what has happened to me, though it's hard to believe. This isn't a pathological condition, it's probably some form of agnosia or an unknown type of cognitive disorder. The flesh beast called Tanbo Hyoko said that there were patients who had de developed brain disorders after receiving the same treatment as me, so I guess I'm just another failure. So much for that elite T University medical school. Makes me want to laugh in that know-it-all doctor's face. That said, I don't blame the doctors who operated on me. After all, I do owe them my life. I know as well as anyone how low the chance of success was and that there was no other way to save my life. What it all comes down to is my bad luck, nothing more. The point is that my condition isn't treatable like your everyday mental disease. I have no choice but to live the rest of my life with this disorder, just like someone adapting to a hearing aid or wheelchair, I must adapt to this nauseating scenery. Of course it's hard, it wasn't easy to resign myself to this fate. But now there's more than just despair, even for me, there's a single gl glimmer of hope. Keeping my eyes on my feet so as to see as little of this horrifying world as possible, I hurry home. Looked like a nice day, didn't it? Yeah, black sky, alright. Uh, pass. <laughs> okay. I live in a quiet suburban neighborhood, in a house that's much too large for me alone. My parents, even unluckier than me, died in the accident three months ago. I couldn't even go to the funeral for being in intensive care. My father's business collapsed, but I was left with a house and enough money to live on for a while. Of course I'm sad, but that accident took more from me than just my parents. In fact, being able to live alone and as I please has probably saved me. If they were still alive, my parents would never have allowed me to live with some strange girl after all. <laughs> oh, Kairi. As I open the door, a bright voice greets me from the kitchen. Clear as a bell, the voice is undeniably human. The moment it reaches my ears, it flushes the day's terrible voices and discordant sounds from my memory. <laughs> Even the patter of feet coming down the hallway is music to my ears. Nowhere else in the city can I hear such footsteps. Only in this house, with Seiya. I'm so privileged. Am I so privileged? In her smile, in the quizzical tilt of her head, is everything that I have lost. My dogs do that. They tilt their head. All dogs do that. <laughs> Since my accident, this girl is the only person I've met. Perhaps the only person in the world who does not trigger my cognitive disorder. True, her skin seems too white, and the color of her eyes and hair is probably different in reality. Even so, her form is clearly undeniably human. And it's not just her appearance, even her voice, and her... 
Oh, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. As I bent down to take off my shoes, Saya, as always, wraps her arms around my neck and pulls me gently into her tiny bosom. Her skin feels truly human, neither cold nor, cold nor slimy, and from her hair wafts the sweet fragrance of a young girl. In all the world, only Saya is pleasing to my five sen senses. And what's more, she smiles at me, embraces me. She knows that she is my salvation, and for some reason is happy that I need her. If I had not met her, if I had not been all alone in this twisted, filth-ridden world, I would no doubt have quickly succumbed to the true madness. It is no exaggeration to say that Saya alone is keeping me alive. Pass. <laughs> もう半分ぐらい塗り終わったよ。で、今はね、海のりの晩ご飯作ってるの。昼間テレビで作り方やってたから。そうか。楽しみだな。もうちょっと時間かかりそうなの。待っててくれる？いいわ。じゃあ
そういえば今日もう一度病院で君のお父さんのことを聞いてみたパパの<笑>おがい Masahiko, Saya's father, is the only relative, is her only relative and a professor at the T University Medical School. Saya has asked me to unravel the mystery of his disappearance. So. I expected Saya to be a little more dejected. Saya responds with an unreadable expression. She gives a little shake of her head and smiles at me once again. I thank her for the meal and set my chopsticks down next to the perfectly clean plates. No matter how it tasted, thinking of the emotion that Saya put into it gave me the strength to finish it. So, do the chopsticks look normal? <laughs> Maybe they're just covered in their bones? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I wanted to say something. Maybe it's like, imagine if everything tasted like when you eat tomatoes. Oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'll just kill myself. It's over. <laughs> it's over. Never. You'd have to force yourself to no, eat it. No, no, I'm dead. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> No. Ever since I moved in, it's been like having a new wife. That implies he had an old wife. <laughs> Saya. Alright, and we're back. I had to cut things out, and then I had to reload to the save, and then I had to go through it all again, because apparently we need to be on this screen. <laughs> right? Yeah. Saya collapses on top of me, still smiling, and I wrap my arms around her. The feeling of her soft, sweat-soaked skin and the warmth emanating from her body reassures me that she's still here. Minori, it's crying. Cool. <laughs> I realize that my cheeks are wet with tears. I wrap my arms tighter around Saya, praying that our bodies will melt together and never again be apart. どうすれば君を失わずに見られる僕は何をすればいいどうやって君に報いればいいこうやって抱いていて Hello Oh, Saya whispers lovingly into my chest I was gonna say pass Oh <laughs> Still in my embrace, Saya gazes up into my eyes. Now I know. No matter how horrifying the world becomes to me, all I'll ever need is Saya. He 
Yo is determined to talk to him today. Nothing will happen as long as she continues to hesitate and putting it off will only make her suffering last longer. It's time to show courage once again. Yo's fourth period on Thursdays is biology and this is her one chance to see Fuminori. Because it's a required course with many students, a lecture is held in a large hall that can seat over 200, but since the room is usually only about half full, it's rarely difficult for Yo to find the seat she wants. Yo prefers to sit near the center where it's e easiest to hear the professor. Most of the students congregate in this area for the same reason. Fuminari is, usually sits next to her, although it's not, <clears throat> not always possible when there's no seat available. Yo all has resigned herself to this as representing the distance still between them, but they still always try to sit as close as possible. She is pretty. She is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, hold on, can you see my mouse? Yeah, like, what, what is this open part of her shirt? What kind of a design is this? Like, look under her arm. It's her high fashion design. That is that is a weird design. The classroom isn't crowded today, so Yo is able to set her bag on the seat next to her without bothering anyone. It's for airflow. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Then. <laughs> when the professor arrives at the usual time to start class, however, there's still no sign of Fuminagi. After waiting for about ten minutes, Yo furtively casts her glance around the room. He's there. Fuminagi must have come in without her noticing because he's sitting alone at the far back corner of the room. Did he miss Yo when he came in? Well, that's impossible in the first place. No serious student would willingly sit in such an inconvenient place. Feeling miserable, Yo slides her bag back over to herself. Do you think he's able to tell people apart? Uh, I think he can understand that when they're talking to him. Because he was able to discern which one was which back in the... What, the cafe? <laughs> I guess. Fumino, he is out the door the moment the class ends and Yo barely manages to catch up to him before he disappears down the hallway. At the sound of his name, Fuminori stiffens as though he was just bellowed at. He turns to her and says, though he seems reluctant to do so. Now that they're face to face, Yo is painfully aware of how much weight Fuminori has lost as sunken Eyes and protruding cheekbones are a far cry from the features familiar to her. She wonders whether he's under a lot of stress or perhaps not getting enough, enough nutrition. Maybe it's both. He looks more tense than he should be, like he's irritated or even frightened of something. His eyes move restlessly from point to point and he refuses to look Yo in the eye. Just looking at him makes Yo's chest ache, ache with sadness. What could, what could have changed him so? Today she reminds herself, relighting the flame of courage in her heart. The courtyard is empty and silent, no one willing to sit on a bench and chat in the cold November air. Don't you remember? Yo almost blurts out, but she manages to keep herself from being so blunt. He smiles like it's nothing, but even that seems stiff and forced. He's even standing precisely one pace farther away than he used to while talking to her. Hmm. Such a jerk. Oh, yeah, he's talking to some flesh monster. I wouldn't want to stand one foot away from it. Yo manages to keep from flinching at the hardness in his voice. Don't they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Well, I, I guess. I mean, I'm sure some people are into it. <laughs> Rather than answer, Sakitsaka gr grinds his tone into the... His, his toe into the dead grass at his feet, fearing that her determination might might flag, okay? Yo lets the words come as they may. So <laughs> Fumori mutters through clenched teeth, no longer even trying to deny it or change the topic. 
This brush off is an even clearer sign of rejection than his earlier evasiveness. Leo's determination is strong today, at least she won't back down. She implores, trying to convey the sincerity of her feelings for him. Beautiful. I like how the voice acting like has this slight like gurgling sound in the background. <laughs> I think she looks gorgeous. Mm. She's, she's got great eyes. <laughs> Yo can no longer stop the words from pouring out. She fears that if she does not release all the myriad expressions pent up inside her, they may be lost forever. Pass. Oh, sorry. Fuminori's shout silencing Yo's entreaty. Entreaty, I've never heard that word. <laughs> She had promised herself that she wouldn't back down, but Fuminori's expression was terrible enough to shatter her resolve. The look in his eyes was not anger or any other warm-blooded emotion. It is hate. Murderously cold hate. He remembers. He remembers, yet he still treated her with such coldness. That alone is more than enough of an answer for Yo. If his words treat her, oh, tear her heart to shreds any further, she won't be able to bear it.僕が君のことどう思ってるのか正直な気持ちが自分でもわからなかったからさきさかさんでもね今ではもうはっきりと答えが出てるあれから考える時間だけはたっぷりとあったからねつくばさん僕はあんたのことが大嫌いだ顔
<laughs> Omi was first to catch sight of Yo and Fuminori leaving for the courtyard. Reluctant, reluctant to interrupt them, but still unwilling to leave them alone, Koji and Omi end up watching the whole thing from the shadows. I'm passing. Okay. <laughs> Throughout the exchange, Omi was clearly itching to jump out and punch Fuminori in the face. Knowing her temper, Koji kept firm hold of her sleeve until the end. If he hadn't, she might very well have done it. Fuminori leaves Yo, his every step seeming to take an act of willpower. Koji sighs heavily into the once more empty courtyard, and the, but the bitter taste in his throat won't go away. Even for Koji, Fuminori's treatment of Yo is unforgivable, however the first thing that he feels is confusion. Koji and Fuminori are old friends, having known each other since before college. As far as Koji knows, Fuminori has never been so cruel before. There's no question that the accident changed them. Omi shouts, clearly infuriated. <laughs> Yo and Omi are best friends, just like Koji and Fuminori, but it was the relationship between Koji and Omi that brought Fuminori and Yo together. Just as it is natural for Omi to be worried about her, her friend, it is also natural for her to be angry with Fuminori. その代わり、ようのことを見ていてあげて。あの子、多分親族を傷ついてるから。泣き終わった後で誰かの優しさが必要になると思う。なあ、それって俺とお前の役回りが逆じゃないのか？私みたいな性格だとね、慰め役は無